Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 50 by 36 horse barn floor. Now this concrete floor is going to have four floor drains in it, three right down the middle. Those, those little round things you can see are floor drains. And one over there to the other side where that other garage door is. Now if you guys are new here, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. I live in Maine. We All we do is pour concrete flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead and click subscribe, hit the like button if you like this video, if, it, if you think it brings a little value to you. Um, but what we're doing right here is we're getting the floor ready just before the concrete shows up. And Luke's, Luke's putting the forms on. We've got my favorite DeWalt uh, hammer drill right there, battery hammer drill. That thing's great. It, it fastens the forms on. He's What he's doing is he's screwing a hole, and then we use a... A special screw there a tapcon screw to screw them forms on so i mean if you guys want to check that out i'll have a link for that stuff down in the description but usually i get here the day before and get all this stuff ready but we've been so busy lately i couldn't do it today so we're here at 5 30 this morning getting the forms on putting the poly down and just making sure that we have everything ready so we're ready to pour now concrete just showed up it's about 6 30 in the morning and we got we got about 25 yards we're going to put in this thing you can see there's a couple grade beams down the middle those are going to be supports for walls being built on top of the concrete floor and then uh, there's going to be some stalls in here too for the horses on the outside part of this the middle part where those three drains are is going to be like a place you walk through from door to door from one end to the other and then the stalls will be on the right and on the left of that that center hallway, if you want to call it. So on this job, like a lot of my jobs, I'm just hired as a sub. Like this, this isn't my job. The guy that did the concrete foundation hires me just to come in and pour the floor. So my job is just to come here and pour and finish the concrete. And, and sometimes we do a little bit of the prep work like we did on this one, but... I don't design the floor, I don't, I don't draw up the specs or anything like that, so all this floor called for was 4,000 PSI concrete with fiber mesh in it. So we got the fiberglass in the concrete for reinforcement, and then we got a 6 mil poly vapor barrier down to help with moisture. But again, my job, they hire me just to pour and finish. I'm here just for, you know, I don't even pay for the concrete on this, that's charged to the, the guy that does the foundation. And I just end up sending them a bill for our labor. So we're getting the first truck poured out. We're pouring at about a six inch slump on this one. We got Again, we got water reducer in the concrete. So that lets us pour a little bit looser slump without, without hurting the integrity of the concrete or the strength of the concrete. Water reducer is just a chemical admixture they put in when they batch out the concrete. That way you don't have to add quite as much water. <clears throat> You can see my little trick there for turning that chute around. How many of you guys have ever done that when you pour concrete? You just flip that in, shoot around to make give yourself a little bit different angle. Let me know down in the comments. Also, how many of you guys use that? That's a 16-foot cold chute. How many of you guys carry those things around with you? I mean, we have a 16-footer on the truck. We got a 12-footer, and we have an 8-footer that we carry around with us. It just makes our life a little bit easier. It makes a little less pulling. And, you know, on a job like this, the 16-footer means that we don't have to get a pump truck. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting my grades right there. And that grade right there is level with the outside edges. And then we're going to tip that down to that, that floor drain. You can see that that floor drain's got like a like blue tape on it in the middle. That's going to slope down an inch in the middle part. So what we're screening right now is just level. We got Eric with us today. Eric's a school teacher over there on the right, but because of what's going on with the schools right now, he's uh, he's able to help us a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm striking my pad from the outside edge down to the drain. So that's sloping an inch right there, and then we'll screed that middle section so it slopes to that one drain. And then back up kind of where I'm standing right there, the guy with the gray sweatshirt, that's me. That's going to be a high point right in between those two drains. 
and then we'll go back down to that middle drain so it's it's a little bit more intricate than just pouring a regular flat concrete floor but it's not too bad you know for us because we do it every day doing these slopes isn't really that much more difficult it just takes a little more time as long as you pour the, sl the slump of the concrete the correct way you know if you get it too wet the concrete's just gonna sag so as long as you have a good slump then it's really not that hard to do you see we got our eight foot shoot on there now so we'll get all this concrete dumped out of this truck get him out of the way get him back on the road and then we'll get this stuff screeded but I mean how many of you guys out there pour just pour concrete floors number one if that's all you do you know give me your concrete floors down in the comments and then how many of you do both the foundations and the floors you know you, you don't sub your floors out let me know down in the comments too just give me a both foundation and floors in the comments and that'd be interesting to know I mean around here where I live most of the foundation guys don't do their own floors they hire it out to, to guys like me subs guys that just specialize in flat work they just they don't seem to like doing their floors in the excavation contractor the guy that does the subgrades that's a whole separate contractor too there isn't really many contractors that do it all around here they all specialize in something you know I've never had the I've never had the temptation to get into doing foundations because a lot of people have asked me that but we've always been just so busy doing flat work that I haven't needed I haven't needed the the extra work doing the foundations I know how to do them but I just haven't had to we've always been so busy doing floors that I haven't had to get into that part of it there's a lot less overhead with doing floors too than it is doing foundations so that was another big decision maker for me you know see I'm over there with a little four foot straight edge going around that drain while Luke well now Darren has the little straight edge going around those drains in the center makes it nice when everybody on the crew can do everything you know there's no laborers there's no finishers we're just we can do both then somebody just grabs a tool and just goes for it no one's giving orders really we're just getting it done that's what makes working with these guys really nice our goal is just to get it in get it done and then uh, you know then we gotta sit around and wait for to finish it and that's coming up too at the end of the video I'm gonna show you guys how we finish this thing so so hang out to the end you'll see what we're using we got a brand new power trial we're using so you'll be able to check that out and we're, we're not gonna burn this floor out I mean this is for horses so we don't want to get it too slippery so you'll get to see how we finish this too we're gonna get this last truck dumped out get him back so the concrete batch man can use him on another job we like to get him dumped out as fast as we can get him back to the to the concrete batch guy and that way he's sir he loves sending us trucks early in the morning so he knows he's gonna get him back that makes a big difference if they're not sitting on the job for an hour at a time So these people got six horses they're going to put in here. They're going to fill this thing right up with horses. They just, that's what they like doing. So they're going to spend the money, give them a nice horse barn. And they probably do some training too, I would imagine. But I didn't talk to her about that. But we do quite a few of these in a year. We'll do a handful of them, these horse barns, even here in Maine. We're getting that, that last part up there screeded to the right. That Again, that's all flat. That's all level. And then the middle is all pitched to those three different drains. So we got high points in between them. And then they go back down to the drains. So there's not going to be any puddles sitting on the concrete floor. They'll be able to wash the horses right in there. Everything's going to drain really well. We got a lot of the screeds out on this job. We had to have all kinds of different sizes. You can get all those screeds and stuff right from Marshalltown, guys. I'll have links for those down in the description. You can check them out. There's a 
Here we are, power trial. So this is the brand new power trial we got. This is from MBW Incorporated. They're out of Wisconsin. These are American made. This is their 36 inch trial. And we got, we're actually using combo blades on this floor. We usually use finish blades and float blades, but the combo blades come with the power trial. So we'll just use them up and then we'll put finish blades on it. This is actually the second the second floor we finished with this power trial and after the first floor my guys really really love this trial it, it just runs nice and smooth it, it's got high rpms on it it's got the low vibration handle so you know there's no vibration in the handle so it makes running it really easy and this is how we're finishing so we're we, this is the floor this is the first pass you can see eric's over there with his hand trial going around the floor drain Making sure that's nice and smooth around the drain. And Darren's getting the concrete all floated up. And we're going to leave what we call, for a finish, we call it, we're going to leave it like a fuzz finish. We're not going to burn this out or shine it out or blacken it out. We're going to leave a little bit of texture on the concrete. So when it does get wet, you know, the horses aren't slipping and sliding around too bad. Now the homeowner was right here with us and she was watching us as we finished and she's the one that decided you know just how smooth or how textured she wanted this finish so that made it nice because sometimes you just don't know what they're thinking so she told us when she wanted us to stop and Darren's Darren's doing a good job power trialing he's been with me I don't know 25 30 years I lost count but a long time he's, he's a really good finisher Filling in a few holes there with the power trial. Now you're going to see him finish filling a hole with his hand trial. You can see how easy that power trial is to hang on to with one hand. And he just bends over there, scrapes up a little cream or paste, and fills in that, that rock hole. Now, if you're new to power trial, if you haven't had a lot of experience power trial and I don't recommend letting go of it and only holding it with one hand like that but after you get more experience with it and you understand how to balance it it's, it's pretty easy to do well guys thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you on the next video make sure to click on the two finishing videos you see popping up right here